Hi and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been reviewing these watches over the last couple of weeks and I thought I would do an, an overall which do I like most kind of thing or highlights of each watch. I got all these watches from my friend Steve over at the Watch Obsession. He's got an amazing collection of completely weird and wonderful watches. It really is. He makes my, my collection look tiny. So I'll leave a link to his Instagram channel below on the screen and in the description. It's really worth checking it out. He's a very good photographer when it comes to all things watches. So here we are. These watches here, they're all in that kind of price category round about you know, 200, 250, somewhere around there. I know that some say on their websites they're 450, but realistically, by the time you search around, you can get a deal. So I thought, what's the pros and cons of each model? How do I feel about them? Which would I possibly spend my money on if I had to? Now, starting off over here, we have the brand Vertigo. Now, this watch, when I reviewed it, it was just one of these watches which is simply okay. Unfortunately, it just kind of lack anything kind of um, special, any standout features. So, you know, it's a good solid watch, but would I spend my hard-earned cash on one? I really don't think so. It's a bit of a shame because it is, it's a really solid heavyweight watch. It really does feel good. It's got an NH35 movement in it, as too is the Aragon, as too is the Nodus. That one has a unit, well, sorry, not a unit, has a Seagull 39, so it's a hand wind. So every watch here has got the same specs when it comes to the movement. So 38 hours power reserve, 24 joule uh, movement. Um, it also has quick set date and um, hacking seconds and manual wind. So it's a good solid movement. You, you know, at this price point, it is the movement of choice. Here, we have the Aragon Evo 45, which is a beast of a watch. This watch took me by surprise because I didn't think it would be as comfortable as it simply was. And it's surprising. I think with its big five millimeter thick steel bracelet, it kind of offset the weight and the top heaviness of it. So it was actually a bit of a surprise when I actually got to try this on and wear it for a few days. So this was um, surprising because I really didn't think I'd like it. I say, same movement as the other watches and just simple heft of it. If someone tried to steal your watch, you can simply batter on with it. It's that kind of watch and fully loomed. We have another NH35 movement here, but this one stands out because it's been regulated. And what I mean by that, it's had the position set in four different positions. So this should be a more accurate movement than the others. It is, even though it's the same. This was a bit of a star for me. I was pleasantly surprised about this because when I first seen it, I weren't too sure about it. But the more I wore it, the more I liked it. It's just simply a very solid, well-executed watch. I do like here, the Armour, the Sherman, this one's called, was a good watch. It's um, got that beautiful movement, you know, Unitas or, you know, I say it looks like a Unitas, but it's actually the Seagull, but it still looks simply stunning. The downsides I had with this watch, misaligned dial and the colour, the colour scheme doesn't really seem to work. But don't get me wrong, you can get this in a different colour. And I've got a feeling in... If this was in steel, brushed steel or something like that, I think this could be a very handsome watch. So we'd have to see about that. And I just love that moment. I've got to think Van Wine watches. Now, I say, when it comes to bracelets, this one is just simply okay. We have machine center there, folded, fold over clasp, nothing particularly special, but it works, it's signed, it's okay. The bracelet on this is simply a beast. Absolutely hardcore, really, really hardcore. The only thing that lets it down is this um, folded steel clasp. A little bit of a shame. Obviously, we've got a strap on that one, and then we have this. So this, to me, is the best one out of them. Again, still signed. 
It's nothing special, but it's just done well. The chamfers, everything are just more solid. Now, all of these watches have got water resistance, 300 meters, 200 meters, 50 meters, and 200 meters. But it comes down to simply which watch would I pick if I had to pick one? And no shadow of a doubt, this. I think this stands out, really does stand out over the others. It just feels nice, even the bezel action. It is a really nice watch. I like the sandwich dial. I like the fact it's they've took the time to regulate the watch. I think that is a big plus. I even like the bracelet. It's just a little bit different. But would I buy it with a salmon dial? Probably not. They do a very nice black dial. So if I had to spend my hard-earned cash, it would be on the notice. I have, I really am quite impressed with that watch. It's downside to this, it's a want to be Submariner. And I don't like homage watches, not so much anyway. I just think that you're always left wishing you could have the real thing. This, I actually found it very surprising, it didn't break my table. It's, it's wonderful. It really is quite a cool watch, but it is a bit too much. You know, I would say it's like a surfer dude kind of watch, but I think if you wore this on your wrist and you were surfing, you went in the sea, it'd simply drag you under. This is nice. I do like it, but it's just underwhelming. The colour contrasts, it's a bit underwhelming. This, they've took their time with everything. Um, the bracelet, the bezel action, the clasp, even down to having the sandwich dial. I think they really have took their time on this. But the problem is with all these watches, they're in that kind of price point where there's a lot of you know, competitors at that price. Now, as you all know, I recently acquired one of these and it's only a little bit more expensive than them and I'd have this over any of them. Or, let me find it, or you've got a good strong competitor from Seiko, you've got the Seiko 5 range. Admittedly, this one I have modified, but that's for beauty with the Seiko 5 range. And so you're kind of, they're in that awkward position where they have a lot of, you know, sort of like competitors out there. But as I say, this one, I really do like. This one I, I think is for Kitty for me. That would be one I have. So there you go. Out of interest, what would you guys pick? You know, it always is quite interesting to know what you guys would actually pick. If you had to buy one of these watches, which one would it be? I'll be really interested to see in the comments below. Okay, all the best and stay safe out there. See you at the next review. Bye.